Uh, so let's start. Um, so as was mentioned, uh, uh, I work here. I work here as lead uh, engineer, uh, and uh, at Sosera almost for four years. And um, on our project, uh, we were introduced uh, with JRPC. I have done some digging uh, into it also myself. Uh, watch some videos. Uh, and I wanted just to share, like, uh, the, what I have found, and also uh, maybe like there there are also new updates coming, like in net dot uh, net seven, and uh, always there is something new that uh, is introduced to us. Uh, so I will share my screen. Just one moment. Uh, just uh, one small question. Uh, who, who, who also used the uh, uh, JRPC here? Like maybe some pluses in inside the chat would be nice. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's start. Um, so, uh, actually, what is uh, what is JRPC? Uh, so, uh, uh, so inside Google, they need to uh, um, like have a better speed, a better latency between their services. So uh, they thought of the way how to. Uh, they found a way how to do that, and um, for that, uh, they created like used a protobuf. Uh, uh, protocol. Uh, it's protocol buffers. It's like a contract as it defines uh, what should uh, like what kind of messages uh, are sent between servers, clients, and what is the content of the server. And also, it contains like um, like so at the end we will have um, all this information in uh, in, in bytes. And another part of JRPC is HTTP uh, two uh, protocol uh, that is uh, that is used because it also allows us to transfer binary data, and it also allows us uh, to stream uh, from client to server, from server to client, uh, and also bidirectional. And uh, this will. It just helps us to improve our performance, our latency, through spoot, and so on. So let's just uh, let's go directly to the to the Visual Studio and uh, peek inside. Um, do you see my screen? Do you see Visual Studio? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Great. Uh, so uh, so this is like a basic contract. Uh, we have like a service, uh, some kind of like music box where you can uh, find song, uh, upload song and listen to it. Uh, well, we will not hear any music, but we will like, uh, will receive some kind of lyrics uh, and this will simulate like listening to the song. Uh, so basically we are saying like, mm, we are defining our like method a uh, remote procedure uh, that will like start on the client and be performed on the server. And uh, this contains some kind of request and some kind of response that we will receive. So like like some, some kind of uh, client server interaction, like basic, like we have in HTTP uh, will be with, we are sending request where we have information that, okay, uh, it will contain an author and in response we, uh, response, we will like have uh, name of the song uh, that we are looking for. Um, so that's basically it. Uh, it's it's so simple just to define the contract, and uh, what gives us that uh, we can have like multiple uh, like different environments: Java, .NET, uh, C++, Go, whatever, and uh, all of them can communicate uh, between each other. Only because uh, they use this uh, 
protobuf uh, contract. Um, yeah, so let's uh, do a quick test. Uh, so uh, on the upside, like maybe for someone, uh, someone it's new, uh, but actually in like, I think at the start of uh, this year, uh, in the beta, they introduced support of uh, mm, of gRPC into Postman, and actually I like this tool. And now, now they went from beta, and they I think have like really good support of gRPC, and we can test it. So uh, this will be my client. So we will try to uh, like work with this uh, uh, with this. Uh, server contract okay so um basically as we remember so we are saying okay uh, look uh for uh under this address where our gpc server is running uh i already have found our contract uh that it knows like okay that it contains uh, such uh, remote procedure and uh so we can like generate uh, here some kind of message that will be later like searched. For example, this is some kind of authors that can supposedly be there. And uh, okay, I'll just minimize my screen a bit. Uh, and here we can like invoke this method and we will get a response uh, from the server uh, with like the for this author there were no uh, no songs maybe I, I think i would have picked up better words like for the name of the contract but uh that's just a, a sample uh, let's let's get to our presentation do you have any questions uh, so far uh, now we will go deeper so this was like a quick peek uh what we have and now let's let's go like actually uh, let's compare because uh, most of the time we are actually working with rest uh, not with jrpc actually uh, i had uh, like a couple of projects uh, under my belt and most of the time for communication we, we are actually uh, using rest and that is okay because uh, Everyone knows it's it's a standard uh, Ulog JSON. It has great browser support. It has great tooling support, um, and uh, you have client, you have server. What, what can you ask for more? Uh, but there are some cases when when you need there. Uh, so in case of gRPC, uh, instead of HTTP 1.1, we are using HTTP 2. Uh, what this allows us is um, um, is to have a streaming streaming from client to server from server to client and be directional. Uh, we have a smaller footprint, and uh, this means that uh, just in case if we have like a large payload, we want to deliver deliver a bigger amount of information. It will be compared to uh, JSON, it will have a smaller footprint. And also such benefit is strict specification uh, because when you define protobuf contract, uh, it will be the same like uh, across a uh, whole, um, it will be the same ac across all systems. Uh, browser support not so great right now. Uh, there are some ways to do that, uh, but you will be able for now, as I believe, only to do client to server communication or uh, streaming from server. And also a bit lacking on tool support. Uh, while I was investigating, um, uh, I was wondering maybe there is some way as uh, that I can like... Um, capture some traffic uh, like using Wireshark, uh, Wire for example, and see like uh, what was the contents of the gRPC that I was, no, that I was sending. Uh, so right now they are still working on it. 
they made some progress at least um, i think maybe in in a year you'll be able to to do that uh okay it's, yeah so so just wanted to mention that Lyle Westman and uh, it has a support right now. Uh, so, so uh, very, very, let's talk about where gRPC shines and uh, uh, why we should use it. Uh, so, microservices. So, on, on the back end, uh, because of low latency, high throughput uh, during our communication. Uh, th this gives us like mm, but no better performance i would say uh real time communication uh it's um, it means that uh when we trying to communicate with a server we can open a channel and uh, receive uh, messages uh, from that channel uh without like opening a new connection to the server and by this in such way we are like um, uh, uh, sparing our resources that, 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 that we have uh, also if we have like multiple environments and want to uh, to communicate between, between them uh, some like network constraints that uh, as I also well, mentioned before as mentioned before that uh, that the messages need to be smaller uh, for better processing um, yeah uh, it's all, everything sounds nice and uh, uh, you may, may maybe even ask why why don't we have this in our uh, in our environment um, I wanted to just to say that uh, we can reuse, like uh, we can uh, like improve our rest uh, also, uh, because in 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 this case, um, like um, when we are working uh, instead of HTTP one point one, we can still like uh, replace it with HTTP uh, two and. Uh, receive a better performance and with HTTP2 also comes as um, client uh, client server uh, streaming so it's I would say it's not so bad but still okay uh, some questions so far uh, in the in some yeah may I ask a question uh, so you told about your PC as a streaming tool so uh, what's the difference between uh, let's say web sockets and your PC when should we use like web sockets and when your PC mm -hmm. uh, I believe uh, is it actually uh, they can they perform uh, like the same uh, same kind of work so to say uh, but I would suggest uh, to use gRPC because it's like gains more uh, support uh, like in in browser uh, in tools and so on mm -hmm. fine thanks um some of the cases that uh, i found actually interesting um uh, there is uh, in some links that i that will be in presentation you can watch later uh there is a talk uh, of developers that works of eve online it actually really giant uh, online multiplayer game uh where like one thousand user can be in the same place and they need to achieve uh like really like high speed uh, in communication uh, in uh, calculating like what is happening at this uh, uh at this moment because if one player just shoots one bullet it means uh, that uh, all 9999 needs to be aware of that 
and there is like a really good uh, not just regarding gRPC uh, but explanation like uh, why like if they uh, when they use uh, rest uh, which http uh, why they just um, received some like um, uh, some bottlenecks that they were unable to uh, improve the performance. When they switch uh, in some cases to JRPC, uh, they, it allows them to uh, like to really improve their environment. Uh, and it's a really nice video. It's like what I like about that. It's not just about JRPC, but in general, uh, how uh, architecture of, uh, of big system evolves and it becomes better how the solutions are found and so on okay uh, let's move on uh, improvement in latest nets uh, frameworks so the topic uh, of this uh, uh, of this uh, let's say lecture is actually .NET 7 mentioned uh, but the new .NET version is just like comes every year so it, we will just wait like just one more year it will be .NET 8 and uh, what I want to say with each year of each .NET framework they actually make some significant significant performance improvements uh, when they're like adding new features uh, like new performance improvements for .NET 6 as overall as they're trying to write the like the code that generates some boilerplate uh, for for JRPC as it gives improvement in communication and so on. Um, what I would say an interesting part is like uh, first of all is is uh, JRPC JSON transcoding. Um, it's a functionality uh, that allows us uh, to provide a REST API interface uh, by also leveraging uh, gRPC. Uh, so, so this means so at the same time when we have gRPC interface disposed, uh, exposed, uh, this means we can also uh, mark with some attributes uh, our gRPC um, uh, gRPC calls. Uh, and they will be exposed uh, uh, as REST calls, and you will be able to call them like from from web browser, from your website, and it it will work great. And this uh, will allow us like if you are like uh, switching from, uh, for example, from REST to gRPC, if if the need such if such needs will arise. Uh, but you don't want to break the existing functionality. You can like in such way like compensate for that. Uh, also, like some good ideas that they have introduced in .NET six. Actually, some load balancing strategies that you can introduce on the client side uh, without uh, introducing something uh, at the at the back end. And some some improvements uh, when full handling fault handling like um, retries and so on. Uh, so um, let's let's look into the demo. I I'll let, let's first look again at our contract and see uh, what we have. Okay, let's go here. So in here, um, let's uh, talk about. Uh, okay, so there are like four ways to communicate. Uh, one is like a client server. Uh, this is a remote pr procedure call responsible for that. So it actually uh, received just uh, some kind of request and sent the response. And here we will describe describe what we, what will contain it. Uh, in the case of response. Um, uh, we can see that repeated, like it means that uh, we can receive a list of uh, like names of the songs. Uh, how to, how do we mark uh, that we will have a stream? In case we like have a we we just 
in, ca in case of server-side streaming, we mark our response streamed. Uh, this means um, uh, client just opens HTTP to connection, sends some kind of request, and uh, till uh, I, I, the stream like can continue even forever uh, if you will like not run out of some replies and it, he, uh, the client will receive this information until he like stops or cancels uh, this, this connection. And in case if you want to like have some updates from the client, so we just uh, mark uh, our request uh, as a stream. This means we will have like multiple requests uh, sent one by one uh, to, uh, to, to the server and there will be process there. Um, when we are like sending multiple um, requests uh, or receiving multiple responses, we need to remember uh, they they are always come in order. So this means uh, if we send something first, uh, there will be like no uh, mixing uh, of the responses or mixing of the requests. They will always um, arrive in the order that we have sent them. Uh, yeah, the contracts are really simple. Uh, nothing much to learn. So, um, so, so when we have this definition, uh, our actually compiler, uh, like provided from Google, Google or uh, I don't remember, maybe from Microsoft, uh, in in the end generates. Uh, auto generated code that will like handle for us uh, all the heavy lifting so uh, for us what it needs to be done is, is just only just to uh, create uh, some kind of service for us and just leverage that and not, not nothing special so in here we like for example handle uh, request response uh, in, in this case we will uh, have a stream of uh, responses uh, like with uh, the song of the lyrics and in in here we just will try to upload our song this means that we will send some text and uh, it, it it will be sa saved on the server uh, okay let, let's let's uh, see how it checks and as I will try to use postman Okay, so let's um, upload our song. You can see our previous information. Okay. Uh, doesn't matter. ACDC. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, it's it would be better just to give it a simpler simpler name just to 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 find it later. Uh, okay. Uh, let's try to so this means we will uh, have a, a upward stream a stream of um, uh, like requests from the client to the server. So we are trying to invoke our uh, our service. And this means so connection was established. Now we only what we need to do is just uh, send the information. So in here we see is it like what we are actually sending. Now we are able to end our stream. Call call is completed. Um, yeah. Uh, what now we can like play the song. Uh, we'll try to find the outro. I see, you see, uh, yeah, and just just invoking this. Uh, this means that we will receive a stream of uh, of responses from from the client based on our request. Uh, so it's done. 
parsing is really just split string and we just only receive like the words that should be playing. Uh, should we just have like uh, stop receiving the stream? It, it would be fine. It will not complete it. Um, oh, it will. I mean, it will end uh, at the moment when we stopped it. Okay, so we have received uh, like very interesting songs that you can um, you can sing to it. It actually reminds me of very good song from Steve um, of. Uh, from Balmer, developers, developers, developers. Uh, but okay, okay, let's try to find it again. Yeah. So basically it so we have found some songs uh, so there is no not so many magic to it uh, it, it can be straightforward uh, the only like I see that complication is just to switch a bit your mindset and also like we are waiting for uh, like station but like to improve the tooling support uh, that we have on our side. Mm, okay, do you have any questions so far? Okay, uh, before I like try to explain maybe some additional functionalities that we uh, can, can uh, set up on uh, on uh, our GPC service a uh, few words uh, regarding like projects that we are working on um so uh, why there was an idea to use gRPC um it's uh, previously we had like uh, a service that was written in VCF uh, that received the uh, like different uh, messages that needs to be processed. And because it's end of the time for VCF, we need to replace it with something newer and um, something better. Uh, so regarding to gRPC, just uh, my thoughts, um, I have discussed with some of the developers uh, at uh, like, on, on that side, uh, there are actually some messages that are quite big and we will receive better performance when processing them. Uh, but if the messages are small, like, like just around one kilobyte, for example, uh, there will be like not really big benefit uh, when you will like over the rest. So this truth boot latency uh, it will almost be the same. Only when the message that you are trying to send and uh, receive, if it's quite big, when you serialize it to the bytes, uh, you will receive some benefits. O also, uh, one one moment that uh, not con like completely con yeah well gRPC is great actually, but is it not complete completely convinces me is it, actually the amount of uh, messages that we will receive. So this means um, I'm not sure. Maybe there will be some periods of time when those messages like uh, come one by one, and uh, and uh, and uh, just, I don't know, the rest will be enough for that, I would say. Because, because uh, there needs to be justification to making some cha such changes. Um, that, that, that is just my opinion. Uh, okay, 
so what else can you do? So I also have talked to you about um, some retries that can be set uh, on GRPC, GRPC service. So for example, on client, um, our like uh, need is like to successfully uh, deliver message to the recipient to the server. Uh, and in case something went wrong, uh, we need to be notified uh, about that, or we need to come up with some, for example, retries uh, that, that will try to resend this message again. Uh, such functionality uh, exists. Uh, and let's, let's stop ser server for a bit and restart it. Mm -hmm. Okay, you'll have it clean and fresh. Mm -hmm. And let's uh, look at like a sample client. Uh, so basically, uh, when you're set up in your channel, uh, you can also configure some like uh, retrying policies that can be set uh, on our calls. Uh, so uh, you, you can like set up how many uh, attempts uh, you're trying to make a call again, how many, uh, like uh, what are uh, like the interval between the at the attempts, what kind of status codes you will try to process. So uh, here we have like our mm, server. It uh, doesn't have any like information. So we are, we are trying to make one call. Uh, if I run it, it will uh, like, because uh, there is no such song and so on, it will just uh, fail with uh, like, uh, with exception, so we can see that it's trying to send it multiple times, and when we look uh, like on the server, we can see like there is like first failure, second failure, and there will be five of them. Um, like information is not not found. Uh, later on, we can in our like exception handler can log it or somehow handle this situation. Okay, uh, let's move on uh, to another feature uh, that that I was talking about. Um, this is actually a JSON transponding. And uh, uh, so basically, uh, basically, oh, okay, it's not, uh, it should be on the server. On the server, uh, there is uh, like uh, Google just provided us with uh, additional API functionality that we can mark uh, our GRPCs with uh, some metadata. So as you will guess, uh, based on this uh, information, so if I'll go to the browser and for example, try here, just I, I, I will make a call uh, to our gRPC server. Uh, so don't don't look that it's just you can only like uh, have simple get. You can actually uh, can apply those tags on the body uh, that you are sending during post on the parameters uh, that you have in your query, and it's uh, really good. And just yeah, you you in such way you can have like uh gRPC and rest uh, at the same time uh also one thing that uh, you need to remember it's a, it's a, you need to watch for your health uh there is also like a standard standard heartbeat service um this service uh, is uh, like uh, checks if there are any malfunctions uh, on the 
uh, our gRPC server. And uh, you can ask it like all gRPC, hey, everything is all, all right or no. And you can have like information about the status, what it, what is like happening there. And it's uh, already comes like from the box. You can just install Funiget packages and uh, add uh, some health checks uh, to your uh, to your server. Mm. Yeah. Uh, some questions. Uh, okay. Uh, then I just uh, want to mention a few things. It's actually uh, we have uh, where we can like uh, where, where I want to address one moment also with uh, uh, that is related a bit to REST. Uh, so there is like limited support uh, on the browser side for uh, for this for gRPCs and uh, what uh, actually you can do about that there is like like few ways uh, one of this is actually this json transcoding so you are just uh, saying that server will be responsible for that now uh, like other options is there is also a javascript library i believe it's called grpc web and uh, it uh, it requires you it just um, like gen generates uh, uh, for us those gRPC calls so it translates uh, information from on the client side and tra transfer it to the server side and another way is that you can handle it on the server side uh, so th there is like a possibility to analyze our uh, contract and based on that um, uh, I, th I think it's called GRPC gateway or something like that it generates uh, a proxy proxy server uh, that receive rest calls and after that it will translate those calls into GRPC and send it and will send it uh, it further as for my opinion from from the current standing of those three ways like to work with the browser, I would say this transponding uh, looks the best. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, actually basically it that I wanted to, to talk to, to talk with you. Maybe you have some uh, questions, ideas to share your own experiences. Um, so feel free to, to share it. Guys? Seems like no. <laughs> okay, so, uh, uh just uh, regarding some materials uh, that will be useful. Uh, so we have a great, actually, Microsoft has a really great support uh, with the samples. Some of them were actually a bit outdated, but you can like find on the internet how it should really work. I mean, documentation is a bit updated, but samples are, are, are all right. And uh, you can really easily start this uh, communication between client server whatever in which way you want um, and good like uh, intro to grpc well there, there's a lot of interest and uh, if you want to hear like the same uh, what i said but maybe in a bit differently formulated i would i would suggest this this guy is that just uh, does this um, presentation on YouTube. He does it uh, really good. Uh, there are some good good points because he he doesn't like 
I, I would say he doesn't like throw all hands up just for the JRPC just to use it or whatever he, he wants, but he just look at it like realistically. And uh, another one is actually it's this this video. I really enjoyed it. Like it's uh, one hour uh, or maybe 15, min 15 minutes, uh, but I really enjoyed it. And uh, it's... I would say not because I'm a gamer or it's has some uh like gaming gaming sim, but uh, it just shows how architecture evolves, what kind of decisions do you make, and uh, why you you can like make the decision to switch to JRPC. Highly recommend the last one. Um. Okay. Uh. So, uh, Alona, I think then we can stop it. Uh, okay. For now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Andre, for your uh, great presentation. We have um, uh, thanks for word in our chat and uh, thanks all who join us today. We will. Happy to see all of you next our events, and uh, uh, we we will send follow up with all information um, during a day or two. Thanks all. Have a nice day, and be safe. Yeah, be safe. Yeah. Bye bye.